Sharon and I, uh, every, every year, uh, we take 10 days at the beginning of each new year to go away together as a, as, a, as a couple, as a husband and wife, and really just to take some time to refresh, to relax. And I might just say, just make sure we're focused or refocus. We, we've already done all the ministry plans for 2021. Dear God, that's not fun, trying to plan ministry plans in the middle of COVID and try and figure out when's this all gonna, the vaccine gonna go out and when's it all gonna be the, the, the resemblance, anything close to what we would knew as normal. Like things like women's conference and so many different events and speakers that we plan. So we're really wanting to say, God, is there anything else that you would wanna speak to us as we're going into the beginning of a new year. Sharon and I sit down and work out what our goals are. Matter of fact, one of the things we did on this trip is we actually wrote out our, our, our bucket list of places we'd love to visit um, over the next 15 years, places we'd never been. One of the things that we wrote in there was we wanna go to Egypt and see the pyramids of Egypt. It's just something I'd like to do. I'd love, another thing I'd love to do, and you gotta think big, I, I, I don't know if it's even possible, but why not think it? Because if you can't think it, you'll never see it. So I said, man, I would love to get in a submarine and go as deep into the Mariana Trench as I possibly could. Then I'd love to be in a ship and go somewhere into space. Why not? Some of you are going, really? No, I'm serious. That, that's just, I thought, let's think big. Praise the Lord. So while we're away for 10 days, we chose to go somewhere warm because I love warm weather. I like winter, don't get me wrong. I just wish, I just wish winter was January and February and that was it. I just wish that on March 1st, a miracle happened and the sun came out and it was 82 degrees. That's, that's me, that's me personally. Some of you are very sick people and you love cold weather. I don't know what is wrong with you, but you need prayer. And uh, so we went somewhere warm. So we decided we were gonna, we saw this beautiful, um, like a 50 foot catamaran that had sails on it and they sold this sunset cruise. And I said to Sharon, wouldn't that be romantic? You and I on a sunset cruise. So we booked our sunset cruise. When we got to the place we were to meet to get on the sunset cruise, we noticed, we started looking around, everybody else was college age except us. We were the only old people. And I kind of looked at Sharon and I'm telling you, the way they were dressed or the way that they weren't dressed, I looked at Sharon, I said, well, this is gonna be an interesting cruise. When we get on this 50 foot catamaran, they have these little trampolines where you sit at the front of it, which is where I love to go on those big catamarans. And I sat down there and all these young people just sat all around and, and uh, on this cruise. And as I'm looking, I'm thinking, okay, sunset cruise. I feel like we're the old people. Then the music started. Dear God, the music, the sound system was awesome. It was really, I've never heard speakers this good on a boat anywhere in my life. And then there was this one couple that Sharon and I couldn't take our eyes off. <laughs> they were hilarious. They were dancing and moving. And within five minutes of this thing leaving the dock, this couple had everybody on the Sunset Cruise on the boat dancing. And I said to Sharon, oh my gosh, this is a party boat. We thought we were signing up to a Sunset Cruise. And I'm telling you, there were shots at the bar. There was, <laughs> and so Sharon and I are sitting there laughing, going, how on earth did we get in the middle of all of this? Sharon and I look at each other and I said, honey, this is who God has called us to reach. And to be honest with you, I didn't feel uncomfortable. I didn't feel embarrassed. I actually, Cheryl and I both went, look at them. They're all having a great time. And there's this one couple that got everybody else going and they brought their own bottle of champagne. Well, there was alcohol flowing all over the boat for free. So why bring your own champagne? They were gonna make sure they were gonna partay. And I was looking at them and I was laughing because, you know, they were dancing and they were smiling and I don't know if they were married or what the story was. All I knew was they got everybody going and I was enjoying the music and the atmosphere thinking, thank you, Lord, you're just reminding me who we're called to reach. But then something really strange happened. They dropped us off at Margaritaville. We didn't know they were gonna drop us off at Margaritaville. We thought we were on a sunset cruise. Drop an anchor, watch the sunset, 
romance? No, no, no. There was dancing and moving and grinding. Now we're all going to Margaritaville. So Cheryl and I went to Burger King. <laughs> and we get back and I'm looking for the couple. We get back on the boat and there's another hour to get back to our dock. And I'm looking for the couple who got the party going. But the couple who got the party going were around the side on the rail and they were going at it fighting. Something happened in Margaritaville that didn't, they didn't bring the party back to the boat anymore. They were now the party poopers. And you can see the husband, not if he was a husband or who he was, but he was standing there over the rail and he's looking at her and he's going at it. And then she's going back at him, the two of them. And I went, hey, what happened to your dance? And as soon as I said it, I felt the Holy Spirit say, Steve, the church has lost its dance and we got to get our dance back because we are living in challenging days. And I was just thinking about us as a church and just thinking, come on, don't let Margaritaville or what happened somewhere in half time in life cause us to lose our dance. Now this may shock you, but I used to be quite a dancer. I mean, I used to be quite a dancer. For instance, some of you who are probably my age, who's, you know, I'm only 28 <laughs> plus tax. And, uh, but you know, 50, how old am I? 57. And, uh, but you know, I used to be, I used to, anybody know Sting and the movie Quadrophenia? How many remember Sting and the movie? Have a look at this. This is, this was my, this was my jam right here, if we have it. And they used to have called, what's called the mods. Who's ever heard of the mods? And I used to be a pogo dancer. I would go into the bars and clubs and we'd sing songs like this. Don't worry, it's okay. I'll be coming home to see you today. Don't worry, it's all right. I'll be coming home to see you. A couple. That's how I used to dance in bars and clubs. I just thought I'd share that with you. And then, then of course, something happened tragically to music, this thing called disco in the 80s. I mean, this was like, you know, and, and that, was, that was a travesty to music right there. And, uh, and then, you know, you know, you go into the bar and I started thinking about different kinds of dance. There's, there's ballet. Our daughter used to be a ballet dancer and there's ballroom dancing. I learned a little bit of ballroom dancing for our wedding because in Australia, it was a customary that, and of course it is here in the States as well, but we got a quick little ballroom dancing lesson because I never, I only was a pogo dancer. And so I, I had to learn how to not step on Sharon's toes when the bride and groom danced. Then there was, there's contemporary dance, there's hip hop, there's jazz. How many love jazz? There's tap dance. I used to do that. I had a terrible accident, fell off the sink. And then there was, that's funny right there. And uh, then there's folk dancing. Matter of fact, there's even Irish dancing. Robert, come up here and show us a bit of an Irish dance. Come on. We need some, we need some music to this. That, 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 come on, come and do it. Come and do it again. Are you ready? Come on. That's pretty good, Rob. Praise the Lord. For a man that's 78 years old, you did fantastic. Then of course there's modern dance, then there's swing dance. And I just thought, why do some people don't dance? Why do some people choose not to dance? Well, number one, it requires skill. Unless you're a pogo dancer, that's pretty easy. Um, and discipline and time, it involves other people. And that makes people feel uncomfortable. It also involves performance and some people just don't want to perform. And I thought about, even in the church, we were taught that dancing stimulates the flesh and that dancing is evil. Do you remember? I mean, Robert Cameron back for many years used to come to the United States from Scotland and he actually helped the church get its dance back. And they were called the Dancing Camerons. Because back in the day, look at this as the idea that somehow dancing stimulates the flesh. You remember that movie? Dirty Dancing. Get your mind back here into church now. Okay, come on. And so, but the Bible's got a lot to say about dancing. Did you know in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 7, it says here about King David. He wasn't yet king. This is after he killed Goliath. And it says, and as they danced, they sang. And I was thinking about these people that were dancing on the boat because what amazed me was they weren't just dancing, they were singing all the words of the songs, songs that I didn't know. But as they danced, they sang, and this is the song, Saul has killed his thousands, but David, his tens of thousands. 
Anybody catching it? Danced. They danced and they sang. You know, the Bible talks about there's actually, there is demonic dancing. Let me show you. The Bible says, 1 Kings 18. It says, so they took the bull that was given to them and prepared it. And they called upon the name of Baal from morning till noon. Well, you can pray for morning for 10,000 years and Baal is not gonna answer you. He's a false God. And the Bible says here, they prayed, Baal, answer us. And they shouted, but there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar that they had made. Well, the Bible says here, if you read on, that they would literally cut open themselves and with razors and knives and mutilate themselves, thinking maybe if they shed blood and, and showed real sacrifice, that that was a, in other words, it was like a frenzy. It was like a, it was like a demonic thing. And then of course, the Bible talks about there are dances that people had that have agendas attached to them. Let me show you, Mark chapter six. It says, when the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod. It was Herod's birthday party. And they're having a party. And, and it says, and she pleased Herod and his dinner guest. And the king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. How good was the dance that the king said, ask me anything you want and I'll give it to you. Well, we know that that young lady went and spoke to her mother and that's what led to the killing of John the Baptist and the cutting off the head of John the Baptist. So there's dancing with the genders. And so I just thought, well, why do people, so why do some people don't dance? Well, they feel uncomfortable. Would you agree? So I just don't feel comfortable. I, uh, they, they, they feel like they don't have rhythm. I think I've got rhythm. I just think the rest of you are in a rut. You all dance wherever, I just, you know, I just dance wherever I want. Um, dancing, often the reason why some people don't dance because it involves dancing with another person or they feel embarrassed or they feel like there's a lack of confidence. I mean, they become self-conscious. Would you agree with that? But I wanna show you a dance in the Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 14. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord. Watch this, with all of his might. In other words, he wasn't just doing this, a little quick shuffle. He was dancing before the Lord with everything he had. He wasn't just doing a little... He was dancing before the Lord with all of his might. Look what the Bible says here. I love this verse. It says, while Israel, while all of Israel were bringing up the ark of, it says, of the Lord with shouts and with sounds of trumpets. I just wanna tell you this now. You come to Wave Church and some people might say, man, the music's loud, the lights are bright. And Peter, why is all this so loud? We're just trying to get you ready for heaven. Because every time the presence of God turns up, they're singing, they're shouting, they're celebrating, and they're praising. The Bible says, shout to the Lord all the earth. The Bible talks about when the people were praising Jesus, they said, Jesus, tell the crowd to be quiet. And that's exactly what the world tries to do to the church. It tries to silence the church and it tells you, be quiet, shut your voice, not so loud. But I wanna tell you, we are here and we will come into His gates with thanksgiving in our heart. We will enter His courts with praise. We will lift up our voices. We got something to sing about. We got something to shout about. Come on, somebody. And the Bible says, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. It says, God is stirred up with a shout. Every time there's singing and there's dancing, it is always wrapped around the presence of God. And if you don't have a song, and if you don't have a dance, maybe it's been a while since you've genuinely encountered the presence of God. Somebody ought to give God praise right there. We've been told to shut up, be quiet, get in your box. I wanna tell you, Jesus said, if these people don't praise me, the stones will cry out. Wave Church is here to put the stones out of business. We are here to enter His gates with thanksgiving in our heart, enter His courts with praise. It says, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, watched from a window. Watch what she did from a window. She wasn't in the atmosphere. She watched from a window. And when she saw the king, watch this, leaping and dancing. 
Some people feel like, I don't have any rhythm. Well, can you leap? Because it says he was leaping and he was dancing. David danced with all his might. In other words, it's like, oh, I'm praying today that you walk out of here and you don't just walk out of here, but maybe you got a bit of a leap today because I'm here to say we've got to get our dance back because it wraps around the presence of God. we got something to sing about. we got something to shout about. What happened to your dance? In the middle of all the stuff that's going on in our nation, we need our dance. Can anybody say Amen. It says, when she saw David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. And it says, they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David, it says, sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. I think it's amazing because I wanna tell you, when you begin to get your praise on, when you begin to give God praise, when you begin to get a dance and a bit of a dance back in your step and a bit of a leap, praise God, you're not just walking through life. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. No, no, I will enter His gates with thanksgiving. And my, I will enter His courts with praise. Come on, somebody. I believe some people need to get your dance back. There's some people here that need to get your song back. You've got to keep realise it's about the presence of God and He is with you and He is for you and He is in you and He has gone before you. He is Alpha and He is Omega. He's in your future waiting for you to catch up. You don't need to be dreading what tomorrow is going to bring because He's in your future and greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. And somebody, you got to don't be like this couple and lose your dance. You got to get your dance back because dancing is always wrapped around the presence of God. In His presence, there's fullness of joy. Some people say, I've been in the presence of God. Do me a favour, go back. You're not done yet. It says leaping and dancing. It's amazing. Listen to C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis, a brilliant mind. This is what he wrote. The most valuable thing that the Psalms do for me is to express the same delight in God which made David dance. I'm telling you, C.S. Lewis wrote that. I love that. Ecclesiastes 3, it says there's a time to weep, there's a time to laugh, there's a time to mourn, and there's a time to dance. I believe 2021, the Word of the Lord for Wave Church, it's a season to dance in Jesus' Name. Can anybody say Amen? Listen to what the Bible says. Listen to this, Psalm 30. I'm speaking prophetically over this church and over our nation. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have removed my sackcloth and you've clothed me with joy. And it says that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Do you know the Bible says it's clear that dancing is an expression of joy. And I want to close with this scripture. Watch this. Ecclesiastes, sorry, Exodus chapter 15 and verse 20. Then Miriam, the prophet, Old Testament, Miriam, she was a prophet. She was a woman of God. She had the word of the Lord. Wasn't always perfect. Made one big mistake that she got leprosy and then she got healed. But she was a prophet. You hearing me? She had the word of the Lord. And it says it was Aaron's sister. And she took a timbrel in her hands and all the women followed her. It's amazing. Watch this, girls, watch this. Never underestimate what you bring to the body of Christ. It was a woman that got a timbrel and the Bible says, and she goes in her hand and all the women followed her with timbrels and what? Dancing. And Miriam sang to them. And this is the song she wrote. I will sing unto the Lord, for He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider are thrown into the sea. Miriam just saw the destruction of her enemy who was pursuing her. Pharaoh with all his men, with all his chariots were coming after the Egyptians. She just came out of Egypt with Moses and Aaron and she's now get to the other side of the Red Sea. And the Bible says that she went back down to the Red Sea, to the edge of the water and she began to play a tambourine and she began to sing a song and she began to dance and all the women followed her. And this is the song, I will sing it to the Lord for He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider has thrown into the sea. That sea was the grave of her enemy. She was dancing on the grave of her enemy. And some of you have got to get a victory song back and you 
got to begin to sing and you got to begin to dance and you can dance on the grave of your enemy because God is with you and God is for you. But it wasn't just a song about that. It was a song about Passover. Because it was right before that in Egypt when God said, come on, Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, oh no, I'm not doing that. So then God says, okay, Moses, tell Pharaoh, this is your last chance. If you don't, this one's gonna really hurt you. I want my people, Israel, out of Egypt. I want them out of bondage. I want them out of slavery. You've been mean, you've oppressed them. Pharaoh says, no way. So God says, all right, there'll be an angel of death that'll pass over the city. And wherever there is no blood on the doorposts, the angel of death will go into that home and kill the firstborn son in every family. But Israel, if you will take a lamb and sacrifice it and put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost across the top beam and the two side beams, when that angel of death, watch this, comes through the nation of Egypt on all the Egyptians and all the Israelites, when the angel sees the blood of the lamb, That angel will pass over you and judgment will not come to you. When the angel sees the blood, it will pass over you. And that is a song they began to sing. I gotta tell you, we in the church today, we sing about other stuff. We sing about blessings. We sing sing about provision. We sing about a house. We sing about a car. I sing about my wife. But I wanna tell you the song and the dance we need to get back is thank God that He passed over me. Thank God He passed over my sin. (laughs) Not just the sins of my past, but sins that I and you have committed as Christians. I said some things that I shouldn't have said. I've done some things I shouldn't have done. And I've got a song in me. is isn't just about the blessings of God, but my song is a song of deliverance that God has passed over judgment because He saw the blood. He saw Jesus. That's the song that's got to get back in the church. That's the dance that's got to get back in the church. Not a little golf clap. No, no, no. Where'd your dance go? Something happened. For this couple, I don't know what happened. Jealous moment, harsh words, a turning of events. Emotions that can change that fast, that you can go from being the life of the party to just absolute anger and bitterness. But when it's a dance before the Lord, it's different. It's joy, unspeakable joy. We got a song to sing, we better sing it. I've seen Christians be so active in this season about politics. I thought if you were just as active about bringing people to Jesus, we'd have revival by now. Today, I've gotten five text messages from somebody who's pushing a political agenda. And I'm thinking, our job is to promote the purposes of Christ and we've got to get a song and we've got to get a dance. And our song and our dance is a song of Passover. It's a song of deliverance. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So I said, We're not just gonna be hearers, but we're gonna be doers. And I believe right now, listen, maybe maybe you say, Pastor, you you know, when you talked about I feel uncomfortable, oh, that's so how I feel. I just don't like dancing. Well, look, I just wanna say in a moment, when we all stand up, everybody online, when we all stand up, maybe if you've never danced before, maybe you could just watch, wiggle your toe in your shoe. And then maybe just get off that foot and just go, and just give it a bit of a move. Maybe, maybe we're gonna sing a song in just a moment. And I want us, I want some, I want some dancers to lead us. I want some dance, get in the aisle, I don't care. We're gonna get a song, we're gonna get a dance. We're gonna do what the Word of God says. Maybe today, maybe you're standing there, maybe if you just did this. 
Just do something. Don't just stand there like a statue. Come on. Are you ready for this?